Hi, I am Tataya Yasuan. This unit will discuss about managing and marketing for special interest tourism. Here we have two lecturers to contribute in this unit. Start with Sarutanan, who will cover the topics of marketing for special interest tourism, followed by Dr. Bird, who will cover about managing special interest tourism. Okay, hello. I'd like to come to discuss about segmentation in tourism, um, especially in special interest tourism today. Okay, it is a very, very fundamental topic about marketing and service marketing and tourism because in marketing, we believe that we have to choose an important group of customers or travelers so that we can generate the revenue. There are many ways to look at those travelers into groups. Um, in the past, we like to think that the background of the travelers or the consumer are, is the most important factors which can dictate their behavior and their attitude. We can think about something like age or their genders or their income level, educational level or where they live, their geography or their occupation. What do they do for a living? Before, I mean, like we, we, we try to think that these factors are the most important. They are all very important indeed. Um, these factors, background factors, also shape our behavior, our fantasy, our greed, let's say, okay? And it shapes our behavior towards what we decide what to like and what not to like, what is beautiful and what is not beautiful, what is exciting. But marketers have researched and can find the new pattern of the consumers because it is the behavior becomes more and more complex sometimes regardless of their age regardless of their gender regardless of their occupation we have a new segment of the consumer like people who are benefit thought travelers for example who are they they are just like people who like to collect the points okay who enjoy very much with the rewarding programs or people who want to stay with the same brand loyalty for a long time because they think they can gain more benefit when they accumulate the points or the mile and they can upgrade or they can redeem the rewards sometimes the rewards are even more important than the product or the service themselves so people buy something because they want to see what they can they get in the future the reward is very exciting so marketers want to create more and more exciting more interesting and more relevant rewards towards those travelers that's one thing or the frequency of the consumers or where do they buy sometimes people avoiding to shop without the sales so they're looking for the mid-year sales and the sales at the end of the year like christmas or boxing days something like that so people shop differently people think differently people travel differently and sometimes that behavior does not come only from their own background which is fixed with themselves. We have a mix of all types of behaviors which can shape the way they looking for booking for a trip. It is really fun indeed to explore about these topics and these behaviors. Now moving on towards the topic about SIT, okay, special interest tourism. How was it established though? Okay, I think it is similar terms with the niche market in marketing, which is small, means small market, was established because the behavior of the travelers or the consumers are becoming more and more complex. Complex in the way that how do they explore the information through offline and online channels, okay? The topic that they exchange with the reviewers on the website or applications, the topic where they're talking with the friends or the rewards that they try to compare, what are themselves doing compared with others is becoming more and more complex. More choices, more products, and more serviceless, let's say. So everything is more complex. And then people try to find new goal to travel. Sometimes they look very deep down into themselves and they try to find the new way or to answer the question, how and why do I travel? Why do I want to go to those places? So psychological factors shape more niche market into the tourism. You can see a wide range of activities such as exhibition, rally, extreme sports or going to medical treatment, something like Ayurveda or something like whiskey trail. Some people want to do meditation because of their stress. They want to go somewhere to 
be away from the Wi-Fi or the um, data of their mobile phone to sit and meditate to understand themselves deeply, to understand the world even deeper. And there can be more type of accommodation. So for example, like the homestay and the farm stay where um, they allow people to participate in the community to look at the way people in local places live, what do they eat, what do they cook, the roles of the fathers and the mothers and the children who are the leader of those communities, who are the followers, what do they believe and what do they believe, for example, so that you have more enriched experience in visiting somewhere rather than staying in a chain hotel. You have more enriching experience. And then you can see that this wide range of activities and accommodations or the whole experience, it provides more emotional touches through the travelers rather than the products. People shift themselves from going somewhere to buy something to gain emotional experience. Perhaps they also keep shopping something, but they also expect some emotional benefit from the trip. Those emotional benefits can be from joyfulness, from happiness, until sometimes a painfulness, such as you experience like Thai massage or extreme sports, or you can get injured, but you feel that this is a cool experience anyway. I want to get it, be um, mildly injured so that you can feel that it is exciting in perhaps in diving, in horse riding and rally. Some people aim to have educational purposes when visiting somewhere. They want to learn something deeply. Okay, they want to learn something about themselves. They want to learn about the process of the destinations. Sometimes they know already the subject that they are booking those courses, but they want to find a new way of teaching and learning and the way that people in those communities and also international community participate with that topic. Perhaps there are some more ways that they can exchange ideas or different types of workshops. So this type of educational proposals in SIT allows them to enrich themselves with intellectual and emotional learning. And some people like to see aesthetic aspects of culture, of architect, of foods, okay, they want to see something beautiful and sometimes in a very different way with the definition of beauty from their hometown or home country, okay, they want to see something which is creative, something which is newly defined, okay, can be arts, can be foods, it can be new design of something. So that is another part and also the high-tech geeks, they're looking for new innovation. If they are very interested in technology, they can visit like Technology Expo or they don't have to, okay? They're just looking for the new innovation where they can book their own trip, where they can compare, where they can check in or where they can bargain the prices of the accommodations or tickets or every tour prices more efficiently. Okay, the new way that they can expose themselves and their photos and their video clips to the world. Some people would like to see new ambiences. Perhaps they want to escape from their own reality in their hometown. Perhaps they live in a big city which is very crowded. Everything is very rushing. They want to see some peace somewhere which allow them to be staying in peace and to meditate and to see the natural resources. It can be ambiences which is from um, national resources, national parks, to see the North Light, something like that as well, okay, which can revitalize, let's say, their own traveling experience. From the overall points which I have pointed out, okay, you can see the shift of the focus of some tourism businesses, for example, airports. In the past, airport only providing people traveling from point A to point B. But today, the role of the airports shift dramatically. They're looking for the flow of information, the flow of the luggage, or where it is gone, how quick it should be transferred, and also the tracking system, okay, through the final destinations and to the track back when the errors occur. The airport also provides ultimate experiences about dining, about hotel, about services like spa, okay, or even the fun park for kids, or even the park animals, something like fishes and birds. It can look like miniature type of the zoo, okay, so that 
uh, it does not define themselves as only the airport, but also somewhere to give a very enriched experience for the travelers. Some travelers do not want to leave some airports, okay, because it is very, very impressive to stay there.